slash learn about mobile app. Insured by NCUA. The Gopher Pregame Show is presented by Minnesota Rusco. Yeah, watch me now. This is the Gopher Pregame Show. Welcome in, everybody. You are looking at a live picture right now out at Camp Randall Stadium. The sun is up. Football is about to be had later this afternoon at 2.30 kickoff between Minnesota and Minnesota. And Wisconsin, and we welcome everybody into the Gopher pregame show, the final Gopher pregame show of the season. I am Pierre Newsham, alongside former Gophers wide receiver Ron Johnson and K-fans Justin Gard, who is braving the temperatures. Doesn't look all that bad out there, though. <laughs> Gardzi's got a, a beanie on, I see, but is it that bad outside, Gardzi? Uh, no, you just got to find the sun. We're not in the sun. Uh, there is sun, as you mentioned in that live shot there. We're not in it, so there's a little bit. And I'm soft, let's be honest. I've gotten soft in my older age. It's late November. I should be standing in like two feet of snow. I'm not. It's going to be a beautiful day in the Twin Cities. I just heard about that. It's going to be a beautiful day here in Madison, but only if you're in the sun, which I will be in a few hours. Well, I hope you stay in the sun, my friend. It is rivalry week once again for the Gophers. Last week, things didn't turn out so well for Minnesota, but they have a chance to rectify that today against Wisconsin. Guys, with last week's loss against Iowa, do you feel like there's any added pressure on the Gophers to win today's game? Ron, we'll start with you. Yeah, I mean, you don't want to finish the season out with two losses back-to-back -back like that. And then these rivalry games, if you didn't get the pig, you got to get the axe, and everybody knows the implications. It's just going to be negative on Twitter, and that's what we don't want to see. I know the team doesn't care about that, but personally, I don't want to deal with it. Like, I want a good holiday. I want to be able to relax. I don't want to deal with idiots. So I'm hoping the Gophers can pull this out. But, I mean, honestly, like for the program, yes, this axe is huge for recruiting, uh, for bowl game implications. There's a lot riding on the line here. Justin, are you worried about dealing with idiots? Well, sources close to the program tell me P.J. Fleck is delivering that same message. Let's do this for Ron's Twitter. Let's do this for Ron Johnson's Twitter so he can have a good holiday. Yeah, I, I agree with them, though, on the premise that this is it's an important game because you know this season needs kind of a signature moment, right? It needs kind of a, an exclamation point. Last week against Iowa, absolutely a missed opportunity. Um, unfortunate that they – I thought they were going to win the game with five minutes left. I thought they were going to win the game with two minutes left. I mean, the whole narrative about the season and this game would be completely different if they were able to somehow win last week 13-10. They didn't. So now, like Ron said, you go keep the ax, beat uh, Wisconsin for the third time in P.J. Flex tenure, which I think would be a big deal, and you feel a lot better about an 8-4 and four season than you would a 7-5. and five. Yeah, no doubt about it. Guys, before we get into today's contest, let's talk about the history of this rivalry. It dates back decades. Ron, you've played in this rivalry. Justin, you've covered so many of the games between these two schools. Just how deep does this rivalry go, and how important is it really for one school to get the bragging rights on the other, Ron? Yeah, I know for me, my senior year, I was able to walk off the field at uh, not U.S. Bank Stadium. It was Metrodome at the time, but walk off the field with the axe in my very last game as a gopher. So it's not just that, though. Like when I got here, you know, I had to play against Ron Dane. I had to watch overtime games. I had to watch a punt that didn't get kicked. I had to hear about the stories of the past back in the 60s and the 70s and the 80s. And, and these guys know about the axe. It's one of the oldest rivalries in college football. And just like Michigan, Ohio State, there's no love loss. Like, we don't like them. They don't like us. It is friendly. But at the same time, when you're between those lines, your job is to kick their ass, and their job is to try to kick yours. And so that's what this rivalry is about. I don't care what the records are. Wisconsin can suck. The Gophers can be really good. But when they step on the field today, it doesn't matter. Like, that's what this rivalry has been forever. Justin, you get a front row seat to these things. Uh, what is it, the intensity like down on there on the field? Yeah, it's great, and it's uh, it's an, it, what I think has been been good about PJ Fleck and this staff is that the streak was ended here in 2018, and now it actually feels like a rivalry because there were times, and we're kind of going through this with Iowa right now, where it's so one-sided that can you really call it an actual rivalry? The Gophers in Wisconsin, you absolutely can. 
uh, Wisconsin this week but had videos of all the Gopher fans doing jump around last year at Huntington Bank Stadium after the Gophers won. Um, Jim Leonard saying, yeah, I hate Minnesota. I respect them a lot, but I don't like them all that much. That's how it's supposed to be. So, I mean, I thought Adam Thielen nailed it. He was talking about Vikings Packers, what, a year or so ago, and he said, you know, you've got so many transplants on both sides. It's just so nice to be able to wear the winning colors on school on Monday, whether it's the Packers, uh, Vikings beating the Packers or the Gophers beating the Badgers. So that's what, when you're so close, when you're ge geographically close like we are, when there's a lot of transplants like I mentioned, it's it's absolutely a bragging rights deal. Mo Ibrahim, meanwhile, is coming off a career afternoon last week against Iowa where he rushed for 263 yards and a touchdown. All season long, the Gophers have said, this is what we're going to do. We dare you to stop it, and thus far, many have not been able to do it. Justin, are we anticipating another big outing for Mo, or do we think Wisconsin is up for this challenge? Well, I think the answer for that is both. I think Wisconsin is up for the challenge. They've got a great defense, but with Mo Ibrahim, I don't think it matters. I mean, Iowa has maybe the best defense that the Gophers are going to play all season long, and you saw what Mo was able to do to that. He's just playing at a, at a completely different level. You know, he was on a pitch count earlier in the season. I know there's been a lot of talk about how many carries Mo got a week ago. You go back and look. First of all, he missed the Purdue game, so that's just one off of his legs and his body, but he was on a different kind of pitch count in the non-conference. I think a lot of that was to make sure that he's fresh towards the end of the season. You look at Illinois, their running backs banged up. You look at, I, or at Wisconsin, Braylon Allen was banged up last week. He was banged up a year ago. They did a pretty good job of limiting the hits on Mo during the season, believe it or not, so he would be ready for games like this in November. Yeah, and he's been running with a purpose, Ron, and he has looked awfully, awfully good these past handful of games, hasn't he? Yeah, and, and the thing about Mo, it's his vision. I, I've talked to a couple of his coaches, and, and one of which, Kenny Burns, who's his direct coach, but Kenny Burns brings up the things that Mo does that a lot of running backs don't do which are the intangibles and those are the things that fans are like man I wish uh, pots or I wish somebody else would would have that same spark that Mo had. Mo is a different animal he might be the same beast but he's different and, and Mo's built different when you think about his ability to see middle zone and scan the entire line cut it back him to be able to ride a double team to the last minute and then all of a sudden right, right when you think it's a loss he's gonna he's gonna creep up out of there and so Mo does things and changes games that that's why like PJ brought up on the PJ flex show with us yep. the Purdue game if Mo plays they win that game and so I, I think people forget how good Mo Ibram really is his vision a lot of running backs don't understand when and when to cut back and why and Mo knows everything about this office feel like he's been here forever and this is going to be his last ride as far as a regular season game goes. Ethan Kelly McManus, meanwhile, is once again expected to start today against Wisconsin. Earlier this week on the P.J. Fleck show, Coach Fleck discussed how it's not that Ethan lacks in talent. It's that he's perhaps lacking in vital experience in key situations. Guys, it's a small sample size, but what do we make of Ethan Kelly McManus this far run? Yeah, Ethan, I mean, let's just see it. When you see him on tape, he looks good. He has to work on some things like his pump fake. Most quarterbacks do this, keep two hands on the ball just in case there's defenders. He's doing like the old school backyard, one hand fake like he's playing with his brother in the backyard. So little things like that, like he's going to learn as he grows. But this kid, there it is right there. This kid is an athlete, but he's got to work on that true shoulder pump like this. Nobody's going for that, but he's going to learn that. And his athleticism, his ability when he fakes the handoff to be able to get you 15, 20 yards or a touchdown, I think that adds another uh, uh, a piece of his offense and what he can bring to it. Justin, when you watch him, what has you excited and makes you think, you know, there, there's another level to this guy's game? I mean, first of all, the arm, you know, the, the arm strength. He's got an absolute cannon. There's a reason why they call him the Greek rifle. The arm strength is real. We saw that in Lincoln, you know, when he was going up against the wind through the ball, you know, essentially 50 yards to Daniel Jackson. But honestly, guys, I think it's his overall athleticism. You know, the run against Iowa last week, that 16-yard gain, that's something to go for quarterback hasn't had in a while. That adds a different element to things. So if they do want to stick with the zone read and the read option and everything that comes with it, it's going to be nice to have a quarterback that can get out and, you know, actually get some yards on his own so um, I think they'll move the pocket a little bit with him as well because he's good at that we saw that against uh, Nebraska too so I just think his overall athleticism is what excites me most about him and guys I know it's obvious but when you turn the ball over it makes it awfully tough to win games and all four of Minnesota's losses they have either lost the turnover battle or were even we saw what happened late in the game last week and the devastating results it had for P.J. Fleck and company. When you have a freshman at quarterback, how important is it to allow him to feel comfortable enough to take chances, but understanding he's still got to protect the football at the same time? Justin, I'll start with you. 
Yeah, just you know, smart chances, you know, high percentage chances. You know, take a risk, but not a huge risk. Um, although you go to Lincoln, I mean, he's backed up in his basically his own end zone, and they throw it towards midfield. So you definitely got to pick your spots. You got to be smart about it. And but you know, we saw last week they really didn't put the ball in his hands a whole lot. Part of that was because Mo was just absolutely insane. Maybe the best running back performance I've ever seen. But you'd think, in theory, with Mo running the ball so well, some different passing plays should be open today. So I hope they do cut it loose. We saw a year ago against Wisconsin. You can't really beat Wisconsin or Iowa if you don't have explosive plays. That's a tease for my key to the game coming up a little bit later. They do have to cut things a little bit looser today um, just to loosen that Wisconsin defense up, and that'll be with Ethan's arm. It's a fine line between confidence and, you know, like taking a chance, being reckless, right? I mean, yeah. Yeah, I mean, the thing about this offense and, and Justin Jefferson, I mean, if you want to use somebody in the NFL in your own state, Justin Jefferson told this to the media after they lost to the Dallas Cowboys. We got away from quick game. We didn't do enough. We didn't confuse them. All of a sudden, what happens? Kevin O'Connell comes out and he absolutely destroys that first drive and just looks like, you know, poetry in motion. And the quick game was in there. The trick pass was in there. And so, yes, Justin's right. Putting Ethan back, you know, backed up in the shadow of his own goalpost. But what I love the most about Kirk Shiraka is he realized the play before that. And Pierre and I covered this on the response of the week last week. He saw that they were sitting and they were not giving any safety help to that slot receiver. What did he do the very next time he got in the game? He ran the same exact route with Daniel Jackson. Ethan with that long pump fake, but Daniel Jackson in that corner of safety were so beat. Ethan underthrew him. If he throws that a little bit lower and on a rope, that's a touchdown. But that's the things that I love about Kirk Shiraka is he's willing to adjust in game. And he's going to do that against Jim Leonard because Jim Leonard is a defensive minded guy. You look at his pedigree with the Jets and Rex Ryan, the Ravens. He is going to try to confuse this freshman because that's what those good defensive coordinators always want to do. All right, we are just getting started here on the Gopher pregame show. When we come back, we'll take a closer look at today's opponent, the Badgers from Wisconsin, still pose a threat for Minnesota. We'll take a closer look at Bucky on the other side of the break.
you're watching the Gopher Pregame Show. Welcome back, everybody, to the Gopher Pregame Show. Getting you ready for kickoff here between the Gophers and the Badgers. We've talked so much about Minnesota's featured tailback, but on the other side of the field, the Badgers have a pretty good running back themselves. Braylon Allen is putting together yet another terrific season for Wisconsin. Over 1,100 yards rushing to go with 10 touchdowns. Guys, Minnesota did a great job stopping the run last week against Iowa, but what type of challenge does Allen and this Badger run game pose, Ron? I mean, he's big, he's strong, he's fast, and he cannot be taken down with one tackle. So this is one of those games where P.J. Flex says they have to gang tackle. Everybody has to rally around the ball. And I used to love when Glenn Mason coached with I uh, forgot the defensive coordinator's name already, but it was shooting the linebackers out, shooting the running back, sorry, linebackers shooting the running back's knees out. And what that means is you go low. You don't try to take on a big train like that up high. And it was David Gibbs was his name. But you don't want to take him up high. So they are going to have to shoot his legs out. They're going to have to attack him at every moment right here. You cannot do that. You cannot come with the arms because the kid's too big and too strong and too fast. So that's their task for the day. Shoot him out. Justin, uh, Wisconsin seems to be running back you, and Braylon Allen seems to be just another piece in this long history of great running backs from this university. Yeah, you mentioned his over 1,000 yards again this year. He's one of just five Wisconsin running backs that's done that in his freshman and sophomore season. When you think about some of the names that have come through this program, that tells you a lot right there. And Ron nailed it with what makes him great. I love his patience as well. There's so many times where it looks like he's kind of bottled up at the line of scrimmage. All of a sudden, he pops out, he leaks out, and 80 yards later, he's in the end zone. So he's one of those guys that... He's not down until he's down. You can't give up on the play. You got to swarm. They did a great job last year, as Ron mentioned, making it really physical. I thought about midway through the first quarter, a banged up Braylon Allen wanted nothing to do with the physicality. Made sense. He was a 17 year old freshman and he just went through basically a 10 game Big Ten season. So that's the, he's got to be the exact same deal today. They've got to get as many gophers around him as possible. And I love to shoot him out. Absolutely. Earlier this week on the PJ Fleck show, Coach Fleck pointed out that he believes that Badgers quarterback Graham Mertz is playing with better consistency than what we saw earlier this year. Guys, when we take a look at Mertz, do you believe PJ is correct in his assessment? How should the Gophers go about defending Mertz and the passing game this afternoon? Justin, I'll start with you. The numbers would suggest, yes, he's playing better, but I would also say where did those numbers begin? I think it's his highest quarterback rating of his career here this season. Um, he's just an okay quarterback. Certainly had not lived up to the hype when he came in. I think it was 21 to 24 against Illinois. Threw five touchdowns. Every other quarterback transferred essentially from Wisconsin because they saw the writing on the wall. They've got to make things uncomfortable for him. We saw that last week with Spencer Petras. He was not... I don't think he was uncomfortable really last week against I against Iowa. And we saw what happened yesterday. Nebraska heated up Petrus a little bit. Funny, a couple of strip sacks, a couple of turnovers, completely changed the game at Kinnick. So uh, they've got to put some pressure on him. They've got to make him feel it. It's one of those things where it's kind of always tense here in Wisconsin when they drop back to pass because they just haven't had the success the last few years that they thought they would in that regard. Yeah, that's a good point. They, you know, they don't want to give him confidence coming into this game, Ron. Yeah, and, and PJ's job is to talk up well about the opponent his my job is to be honest and Justin's dead on the numbers look good right but the tape does not there are a lot of mistakes this kid makes he relies a lot on the defense making mistakes and so that's why a guy like Tyler Newbin today is gonna have to do a great job disguising because when you see Skyler when you see uh, Chimer when you see Jack or, and, and Cundiff when you see those guys they are trying to run crossers with a big post and a dig underneath. That's their basic concept. They want to make sure if you are going to cover the deep stuff, I'm going to take the tight end underneath. If you go too far back, I'm going to drop it off to my running back. You have to confuse him a little bit so that you, he feels like he has it because then he will stick on that guy too long, and that's where he's gotten sacked. That's why they're 6-5. and five. And I think, like I said, a guy like Tyler Newbin and also uh, Jordan Houghton, those two guys are going to be the key pieces of this puzzle today. Those safeties have to give him looks that he thinks he he has it and then he doesn't now you see me now you don't and I think that's going to be the key for this defense to the surprise of no one this Wisconsin team plays tough nose defense as well they rank 12th in the nation in total defense and are surrendering less than 20 points a game the Badgers have 15 interceptions as a team and you really got to watch out 
for safety, John Torchino, who has five of them, including two touchdowns. We talked about being careful with the football earlier in the show, but guys, it's extra important against this defense that seems to fly around the ball, Ron. Yeah, and, and, I, and, I, and I hate to bring up a game that doesn't matter with this one, but Michigan-Ohio State. Michigan beat Ohio State last year because they forced C.J. Stroud to run the ball. They stay back and cover two, and they say, you know what, we're not going to leave your receivers open. We're going to let you try to beat us with your legs, and C.J. Stroud didn't run. Eighth and Calig Mannix, same thing. When you feel any type of pressure, go. Just go. Like, that's going to be the key to this game because then they're going to have to honor you. They're going to have to keep a linebacker a little bit closer. They're not going to be able to drop back underneath your routes. And I think that's when Ethan can't sit back there. And you see this right here. That is the key. You have to be able to go and just go now because that rush is coming. And, I, and when I talk about quick game, throw some hitches, throw some slants, throw some bubble screens, throw some quick outs with the tight ends because that's going to be the key to keeping Ethan nice and lathered up and, and rolling. Justin, it's going to be a tough game against this defense, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, Jim Leonard is an unbelievable defensive mind. That's one of the reasons why he's going to get this job. The reports were last night that Wisconsin is pretty close to finalizing things with Jim Leonard. They posted the job about a week ago. That timing was not a coincidence. So he might have the job by the end of the night. Who knows? But certainly should have it in the next couple of days. But his defense is great. And this defense, since he took over, has also improved. They have more tackles for loss. They have more sacks. They've held three straight Big Ten opponents to fewer than 200 yards. It's essentially 187 yards a game opposing offenses are, are, are putting up here against Wisconsin. So that's kind of been the thing since he got here as defensive coordinator under Paul Christ, and it's only gotten better since he took over on, on an interim basis. All right, everybody stick around. When we come back, Ron and I highlight some key plays and performers from last week's loss against Iowa. What needs to be corrected in order for them to win today? That's coming up on the Gopher pregame show. 21 minutes and I haven't said Wisconsin sucks. I'm doing good. Welcome back to the Gopher pregame show. Welcome back to the Gopher pregame show. Everybody counting you down to kickoff between Wisconsin and Minnesota kickoff scheduled for 230 out in Madison. Welcome back into the studio here. I am Pierre Newsham alongside Ron Johnson. Time now to take a look back at what went wrong last week against Iowa. Ron, 
couple of plays standing out to you. We're going to start late in the game where a devastating turnover really turned the game around in the end. Yeah, and we've been doing response moments all week. This week's is response that I want to see change in the Wisconsin game. We rolled the tape here. You'll see an interception. Now, this is just a young receiver not running through the catch. When you throw a slant, you have to run through the catch. And I actually sent that young receiver a text message and said, hey, next week, it's your turn to make a play. He is going to make a play. Agent Zero, I promise you, will make a play. Why? Because he's going to watch this tape with Matt Simon over and over and realize I can't slow down. You see him right there. He's, he's, he's letting the DB, he's trying to let it come to his body versus trying to reach out. And he is going and trying his best to run through. But when that DB has inside, you cannot let him him you cannot cross his face that way you have to push up inside we go to the next play now this one here the next one Ethan Kalik Manis he'll learn right now throw the ball to the tight end he throws it to the tight end he's gonna walk into the end zone he got spooked because of the outside defender not realizing the out defenders not coming he'll learn to just keep backpedaling and he's trying to make a throw back across the middle of the field that's not the throw the throw is right there now to the tight end. Just throw it over his head, let him run. He does have a defender chasing, but that hideaway, as they call it, that hideaway tight end across, that's the, that's the route. That's the one they worked on. Now, again, even if he's going to throw it to zero, throw it to the outside. But I get it. You have a defender, but right there, that little hide underneath, boom, throw it to the tight end. Ethan Kalik Manis will learn that is my throw. I have to throw it to the tight end, and he's going to walk into the end zone. But those, I want to see the response this week against Wisconsin. I want to see how he responds because we know P.J. Fleck, his program is built around response. We certainly would like to see Ethan Kalik Manis go out with a bang, especially in the regular season. We don't know yet if Tanner Morgan will return for a bowl game or not, but that is, of course, a wait and see as well. When we come back, we're going to be sitting down with one of the rising stars on this defensive group. Cornerback Justin Wally sits down with us on the Gopher pregame show. That is coming up next.
you're watching the Gopher Pregame Show. Welcome back into the Gopher Pregame Show, everybody. Special guest joining us now, the sophomore sensation himself, Justin Wally, defensive back for your Golden Gophers. And Justin, um, it has been a long season. I can't believe it's almost over. One more game to go, and it is a big one later today against the University of Wisconsin. Big rivalry game. What are you looking forward to the most taking on Wisconsin? Well, just going out there one last time with all the seniors. You know, this is their last regular season game, so, you know, it's a big game for the acts, you know, the, his, the history of this uh, game. And just, though, we went there with our team one more time. It's a great challenge for us, and we're, we're excited for that. You were part of the team that won last year to win the Axe. You know what it's like to feel winning the Axe. <laughs> what is that feeling like with your friends and teammates knowing that you get bragging rights for an extra year? Yes, yeah, it's, it's amazing. You know, the locker room after the, after the game last year was amazing. You know, everybody on campus was just way more happy, you know, and <laughs> You know, the team means the next day is a little less, a little less stressful. So it's a great feeling just to have the X back. When you look at Wisconsin, what kind of challenges do they pose when you study them on film? Well, you know that um, they have a really good offense. So some guys that receive, they can go get the ball. So, you know, us as a defensive back, you know, really challenge this week. The coach challenges every day to, you know, try to limit explosive plays. And, you know, their running back room is always good. They have, like, they have those talented backs they have. So... Yeah, we're not working out for us this week, you know, but we're prepared for it. So. When you play in a rivalry game like this, what's the key to kind of putting the personal feelings aside and just channel yourself in, knowing it's it's still it's a rivalry game, yes, but it's still football at the end of the day. Yeah, that's that's the challenge every week, really. So going into the game, you know that it's just you, you got to play every snap, every play is own play, and put all the outside noise away. Just play, just be in the now. Now you're originally from Mississippi. How was the recruiting process like for you, and how did you eventually land on the University of Minnesota? Well, I was recruited during COVID, so I didn't get to visit or anything. But, you know, the coaches, the coaching staff, they kept really in touch with me during class. And all the time, they always call, call me on my free time. So it really stuck with me and led me to have, choose them over to other schools like in Mississippi. So just my relationship with the coaching staff. Last year, you really started to come on later on in the season. This year, you've got two interceptions. You've, you've forced a fumble. You have a knack for being around the ball. Where does that come from? Uh, I don't know. Just you know, back to high school, it always came to me. But I just guess just being in the right place at the right time, the ball just just happened to be there. So I guess you call it luck if you want, but it's just always there. Well, I'm certainly not going to call it luck. I would imagine there's a lot of preparation and skill that goes into it. But on top of that, too, this secondary has been such a heartbeat for this team all season long. What can you say about the guys in the secondary room and how this unit has played this year? You know, we have guys – really too deep in every position, two or three deep. And, you know, the whole offseason, we worked hard. You knew from the offseason that we have a pretty good unit just for how hard everybody works. You know, we have Tyler Newbern, who works his butt off every day at practice, every day in the winter conditioning, to now uh, Jay Howe, Tea Time. You have the addition of Beanie and Ryan. And we all just bring it every day. So we feel like we had, we had a pretty good group, and we are just playing our butts off right now. What has made you guys so good, in your opinion, especially in the secondary? Like, what is, has been the key? I guess just um, communication. We communicate a lot more than we did last year, and we just have a knack for the ball. We're all trying to get the ball back to the offense. You're about to complete your second year here at the U. How have you seen yourself grow, develop as a person and a player? Um, I feel like I've become more mature overall. You know, maybe to take coaching better now. You know, coaches, it's, it's way different than high school, so when they own me, I know it's, they want me to be better. So just that. How, how have they made you better? Just, just the detail, like small things, like, Stance, alignment, that, and just in class, you know, being the first two rows, wearing a college shirt every day of class, those things, like those small things really translate to playing the games. Now, as somebody who has never been to Mississippi before, what was it like growing up in Mississippi? What do you miss? What do you look forward to when you go back home? Do you still have family there? What, what, is it, what was it like growing up in Mississippi? Well, I have a big family, so every okay. time I go back, you know, I have a lot of cousins I see, a lot of uh, aunts, uh, uncles, so just that really what I miss the most. Is it a football family? Yeah, my older brother plays at Mississippi State. I have a cousin that played at West Virginia. He played in the NFL a little bit. I have some younger cousins who want to go to Mississippi State for baseball. I had a cousin that played softball at, in junior college. So we really play sports a lot in my family. An athletic family, it yeah. sounds like. That's, that's for sure. Now that this is the final game of the regular season, you know, before you guys go bowling, of course, what are you looking forward to the most stepping out with the guys one last time, especially the seniors? You know, just stepping out with them one last time and, you know, it's their last game, but, you know, tea time, j House. so just going to put on the line for them one last time, you know. Me and tea time been close for the whole two years I've been here, so 
just got some way with a win, so that's the biggest goal for me. What would it be like to bring the axe here once again on campus? It would be amazing, man. You know, two years back to back. Well, I won't be here two years, but I know how last year it was and how good it felt. I just want that feeling again. I remember before the season started when we had our first PJ Flex show of the season out of the State Fair, we talked about who are our guys to watch this season. Justin Wally was my guy to watch, just a guy who seems to constantly be around the football. When you have a corner that has a nose for the football like that, you can get aggressive on defense, and he has proved to be, once again, just a tremendous piece on this defense. Yeah, not only that, when you play in man coverage, he makes it a lot easier on the defensive coordinator as well, to your point, because he can play man, and he's always Johnny on the spot. Last year as a freshman, he had a lot of big plays where he was coming up with it, whether it was a strip fumble or an interception. This year, a little bit of the same. Not as loud, because Tyler Newbin has been really loud this year, but Justin Wiley has been a consistent piece where you're not turning on the TV like, man, I wish he would cover somebody. So, he makes, he makes the job easy for the defensive coordinators over there, and I think P.J. Fleck is excited to have this kid back. And I didn't realize he never visited before he committed. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Like that's, that shows what kind of relationship P.J. builds just by, like, you know, video chat, getting the kid on the phone constantly, uh, and, and just is bought into the program as well. And like you said, you know, he's a sophomore, but – He's only got room to get better. That's yeah. what's really the exciting part with Justin Wally. He's going to have a tremendous career here at the University of Minnesota. When we return on the Gopher pregame show, we'll take a look around the Big Ten. we got a little bit of breaking news in the Big Ten. We'll discuss that on the other side of the break. Welcome back to the Gopher Pregame Show. 
Welcome back to the Gopher pregame show, everybody. Justin Gard joining us once again, and just in time to get into a little bit of breaking news. We want to report that uh, it appears official the University of Nebraska has hired Matt Rule to be their new head football coach. Rule earlier this season fired as the head coach of the Carolina Panthers. Before that was the head coach at Baylor University, really turned that program around. Uh, Justin, I'm going to start with you real quick here. Do you like this hire for the University of Nebraska? Yeah, I think it's a good one. I mean, he did a good job at Temple. He obviously did a good job at Baylor. He was probably, he knew he was going to take a college job somewhere because of the success that he had at the collegiate level. I mean, the second that he was fired from Carolina, people were speculating that this would be a good landing spot. We know that Nebraska likes big splashes. Their AD Trev Alberts certainly likes big splashes. This is a big one. Um, and it's a, uh, given that they have great NIL, they've got great fan base, like this should be a premier job this should be a premier program maybe not winning national championships like they did in the 90s but i think this is a good hire for them and i'm cu i'll be curious to see how he does there and really matt rule had no quarterback really to work with down in carolina ron i think that was the problem in the nfl at the collegiate level he's got a great track record yeah and he'll be able to go out recruit there's i think 1500 kids have entered the transfer portal right now so he'll be able to get in that portal and just like illinois did you find lightning in a bottle you go out and get your quarterback usc as well with with, with uh, with uh, uh, Lincoln Riley and their guy out there, Caleb Williams. So I think that's going to be the key. If you can get a guy to the transfer portal, and I know Matt Rule, that's where he's going to be. Well, Nebraska just knocked off Iowa, oh, by the way, yesterday, a 24-17 decision that really shakes things up in the Big Ten West. We'll talk about some of those games in just a moment. But first, let's start with a game so many of us look forward to each and every year as the stakes have never been higher. It's a game you can watch right here on Fox 9. Number three, Michigan on the road taking on their arch nemesis. Number two, Ohio State. The winner will play in the Big Ten championship game and will almost surely secure a spot in the college football championship semifinals. The Buckeyes will have the home field advantage, but will they have the advantage in the game, Ron? Marvin Harrison Jr. Yes, they will. This kid is electric. It's going to be a fun game. Like, I grew up on this game. I'm looking forward to going to the gym a little bit, watching it, and then getting home and catching the end of it, and then getting ready for the Gopher game. But, yes, this is going to be a good game, but Ohio State, I think they have it. Okay, so Ron says Ohio State wins. Justin, who wins this game? I'm just glad we got Ron's gym schedule. That's good for <laughs> yes. everybody to know on this Saturday. We, we can move on now. Uh, we got our steps in, by the way, um, to get to Camp Randall today. So I we're bet. good today. I do think I do think Ohio State wins. I think it's going to be a great game, though. I think you know we talked about Minnesota entering the rivalry here with Wisconsin a few years ago. Michigan, after losing a number of years in a row, I mean, they're in the rivalry now. It feels like a big game. It feels like the stakes that they should have, all the stakes that we have when they were growing up. You knew Ron was going to go with wide receiver um, with Marvin Harrison Jr., but he's right. Uh, the dude's electric, so I think Ohio State will win as well. Elsewhere in the Big Ten, Illinois looking to finish the season strong. The door is open now for Illinois after Iowa lost yesterday. The Illini still licking their wounds from last week's tough loss at Michigan today. They travel to take on Northwestern. Guys, I think we like Illinois' chances in this one, don't we? Ryan, I'll start with you. Yeah, I definitely do. Northwestern, I think they're just there. They're, there's a rebuild year for you. I don't know who's going to be quarterback for them. Illinois, you win and then you let the chips fall where they may, they could be in the Big Ten West champion, which is gross to even say. I, it doesn't feel right. It doesn't feel right. I'm sorry. <laughs> Justin. Yeah, this, uh, Northwestern, Northwestern's had a tough year. Uh, I think that's obvious. They have, you know, not winning games on North American soil. You know, you go all the way back to week zero against Nebraska. So I, I think Illinois bounces back, and I think Illinois wins. Well, we're also going to mention uh, Purdue. They're taking on Indiana again, the Big Ten West. We're looking at it right now. Again, with Iowa losing, the doors open for both Purdue and for Illinois. Purdue is going to be taking on Indiana, an important game here. Purdue, a real opportunity here to win the Big Ten West. Yeah, and it's an in-state rival. It's going to be electric as far as energy, as far as the players, because a lot of these guys know each other, whether they played against each other in high school, whatever. But I think Purdue, Jeff Brom, he knows what's at stake. This is the games where he tends to win, and everybody's like, man, where's this team been all season? I think it's going to be another one of those days for Purdue. Justin? My favorite tweet on this particular game was there's only two scenarios that can happen with Purdue. They either win today and then go beat Ohio State or Michigan in the Big Ten Championship and <laughs> playing the Rose Bowl, or they lose today to Indiana and don't even get a chance to represent. Like, that's just kind of how Purdue rolls. They're very up and down. But with everything that's at stake today, I know Indiana's plucky. Everybody loves their coach. I think Purdue squeaks by, and I think Purdue's going to Indy. Elsewhere, another ranked team in the Big Ten in action, number 11, Penn State, hosting Michigan State. The Spartans 
can become bowl eligible with a win. Penn State looking for their 10th victory of the year. This game taking place in Happy Valley. Justin, who do we like here? Penn State, and maybe one of the most underappreciated jobs is the one that James Franklin did this year. You know, even when we were there, you know, back in October, people talking about, oh, I wish we didn't sign him to that $95 million contract. It's like the dude had a, a run where he won 11 games, like four out of five years. They took a little step back, and now they're better than everybody in that division other than Michigan and Ohio State, which, by the way, isn't a bad place to be. That puts you, like, top 15 in the country. So really good season for James Franklin. They're flirting with the New Year's Six Bowl bid here, so I think they handle Michigan State today, and the Spartans do not go bowling. Yeah, why, why is it really so hard on James Franklin? I don't know. James Franklin honestly reminds me of Kevin O'Connell when you look at 9-2. and two. The Penn State Nittany Lions are 9-2, and two, and they're like Rodney Dangerfield. They're getting no respect. Like, Justin is right. That job seems to be like, unless you're undefeated, nobody cares. Also, though, they're in the East. If they were in the West, we would be praising them because they would be 9-2 and two in the West. But because they have Ohio State, because they have Michigan, it's one of those jobs where he's just under the radar. He's a top 15 team in the country right now. M Michigan State, hey. Go figure out what you're going to do on vacation because you're not going to a bowl game. So I think that's going to be the key for this. Mel Tucker, hey, you're not coming this year, buddy. Down here for Michigan State, no doubt about it. Finally, Maryland taking on Rutgers. The Terps looking for their seventh win of the year. Guys, who do we like in this matchup? Brian, I'll start with you. I'm going to go Maryland because Rutgers, I don't know if they realize what sport we're playing. Uh, they just haven't showed up all year. No, like it, it just not, it has not been uh, a Greg Schiano type of year. The physicality hasn't been there. Uh, but again, this transfer portal, we'll see how many coaches capitalize on the transfer portal because I think more every year coaches start to realize, hey, this might be the way to keep our program afloat is to just go in this portal and try to get guys who aren't happy at programs they're at. We saw them in high school. They had a year of college to kind of grow and mature, but they didn't play as much. And you can go out and get you a good player. And Justin, I'm going to go with Maryland on this one. Yeah, and Justin, Maryland, they've kept games awfully interesting all season long. They're yeah. a little bit of a Jekyll and Hyde, but they're an entertaining team to watch. That's the word for it. They're fun. Yeah, they're fun. They can put up points. Uh, they've got all kinds, you know, what a great recruiting base the D.C. area is, and they've capitalized on that with Mike Loxley. So, yeah, I think Maryland wins today. Um, I think Rutgers does know what sport they're playing. I'll disagree with Ron there. That's a bold take for me. I think they know they're playing football, <laughs> but Maryland's going to play it a little bit better. <laughs> do, do you, but you don't think they're playing I don't think they. I, I think, okay. they, I, okay. I think they're like a team that, that showed up to a tennis match with, with pickleball rackets. Like, that's what I feel like. <laughs> That's what I feel like they're doing. Fastest right now. rising sport in America, is it not? Is it not? Don't I just it keep? Is. I always keep hearing about pickleball. Hey, Why but, but try to return a Venus and Serena serve. No chance. With a pickleball racket. Good nope. luck. Not a chance. And in that's the world. what they're doing. They're getting punched in the mouth every game. And Greg Schiano again, that New Jersey, like, you know, that Jersey Shore fist pump. Yeah. He's got to go recruit some more. Mr. Tennis out in Madison, there. No chance he would return a Venus or Serena serve. There's no chance. Yeah. None in the world. He knows. You know. JG knows. We're not done here on the Go for Pregame Show. When we come back, we'll give you our keys to victory as we get you ready for Minnesota and, and Wisconsin. That is coming up next.
you're watching the Gopher pregame show. Winding things down here on the Gopher pregame show. It is time now to get to our keys to victory. It's our final keys to victory of the season. Justin, we will begin with you. What is your key to victory today in order for Minnesota to take down Bucky? Uh, first of all, I want to thank everybody that's watched this show and worked on this show and helped us get this show going. Uh, it's absolute highlight of the fall every single year. Love working with you guys. Explosive plays are the key today. We talked about Nebraska and Iowa a little bit off the top. Why did Nebraska go into Kinnick Stadium and beat Iowa? Because they got explosive plays in the passing game, including an 87-yard touchdown. Uh, the Gophers have to find a way to manufacture it. They have just one passing touchdown in the last seven games. They have just seven explosive passing plays in the last seven games, and two of those guys were against Penn State when the game was basically already over. They've got to find a way to get somewhat explosive in the passing game. I'm not saying go Marvin Harrison Jr. like Ron would want to do but you got to you know get a couple of 20 yard passing plays to just make it easier on your offense that is what held them back last week against Iowa they dominated that game PJ Fleck is right they were the better team than Iowa but guess what Iowa hit on a couple of explosive passing plays made it a little easier on themselves and that's why they have Floyd of Rosedale so got to find a way to get explosive offensively hopefully in the passing game Ron your key to victory you know I try to throw a movie out there every week and this week is going to be Marvel you have to be Dr. Strange. Hey, coach, Dr. Strange, that thing up on third down. For those that don't remember the movie, he was able to go through like 15 million different ways that they could beat Thanos, and there was only one. But this is why I say that. On third down, when the Gophers are 64.8% conversions, they win. When they're 31.2% on third downs, they lose. That's more than half. They are doubling their production in the wins. So what does that mean? See it before it happens. Understand it before you call it. Know it before you go through it. And Athan Kalik Manis, see the field for what it's worth and take the best option. But when they go after it on third down, and don't be afraid to run. Because every once in a while, you got to you got to give up your own body like Iron Man. Iron Man had to sacrifice himself for the world. Sorry if you haven't seen that movie. Spoiler I alert. spoiled it. But you have to sacrifice yourself <laughs> for the team. Ethan Kalik Manis, be Iron Man out there. Throw absolute laser beams today, and the Gophers can win this game. All right, my victory, uh, key to victory today, very simple. Turn up the pressure. Get after the quarterback and force Graham Mertz into making poorly timed throws and inadvertent throws. We've seen Mertz throw nine interceptions this year, so there is a tendency to turn the ball over, and if you can win the turnover battle, we all know it's a lot easier to win the ball game. So be aggressive on defense. Make Mertz uncomfortable in the pocket. Turn up the pressure. That is my key to victory. All right, before we get to the matchup meter, we want to tell you to download the Fox Bet Super 6 app for your chance at winning $25,000. Fox Bet Super 6 is a free-to-play contest where you pick the winners and margins of victory of six marquee matchups. If you get all six right in the college football contest, you have a shot at winning the $25,000 jackpot. Open the app. Make your picks before Saturday's games kick off. All right, it is matchup meter time, the final matchup meter of the season. Ron, you have the honor, sir. Well, I'm, I'm trying to be impartial because everybody, I got people asking me questions. I got Cindy Albrecht. I got Ryan Thorman. I got Ron Dane. I got Tony Patterson. Everybody's watching this Gophers Wisconsin game. And you know what? I'm going to give it to you. I got to go Gophers offense because when you look at the numbers, I always say it, men lie, women lie, numbers don't. The Gophers offense is just better. Mo Ibrahim and me, to me, has a better run game than Braylon Allen. Built differently, but better run game. Defensively, defensively, I got to go Minnesota as well. Why? Because they have the best defense, and the Wisconsin Badgers do not have a really good defense. This defense has been able to turn the ball over. Now, when I go to coaching, I'm going to go Jim Leonard for the simple fact of what he's done. He's turned this program around. I miss Paul Chris. I wish Paul Chris was still there because they were boring when he was there. Now they're an exciting team. They're having fun. I hate to say it out loud. That's why I'm wearing my, my Merlot suit because I'm not impartial today. I do not like Wisconsin. I don't want them to win. I hope as they're walking out on the field, they trip over something. Like, I really don't care about the Wisconsin Badgers, but I do respect Jim Leonard. I do respect that program. Jim Leonard has, has been a great coach, so I got to give it to him for the job he's done. He's earned the right to be called a head coach there now. And then for my X Factor, I'm going to go give it to the big boys up front. The Gophers offensive line today with Mo Ibrahim, like Pierre said earlier in the show, this is one of those games where 
We're just going to tell you we're running the ball. I don't care if PJ puts six offensive linemen in there, seven offensive linemen in there. Who cares? It's this is going to be a street fight. You line up and you try to beat us, and we're going to try to beat you. But Mo Ibram and that offensive line, it lies on the shoulders of Quinn Carroll. You're going to see that offensive tackle. He's going to have to keep Ethan Kalik Manis comfortable. That's why the, the what was it? The blind side. That's why the movie was created. Because the offensive tackle is one of the highest paid best players on the field. Daniel Falele is not there, but now we have Quinn Carroll. Hey, you and John Michael Schmidt, get it going today. You're my X Factor. Well, Ron, and that, you know, I'm going to have to stay with you here. So, your f prediction, final score, what do we got here today? Uh, Gophers, 200 million and 17. Okay. Badgers, negative 11. Okay. I Very hope good. that there's a way to get negative points because we're going to figure it out today. But no, I, I think if this is going to be a grinder, this is going to be like a 14 to 7 game or 14 to 17 game. And the Gophers are going to walk away with the axe. Justin, real quick, your prediction for today. I think it, it, it's going to be a grinder. I don't have uh, any movie references, though, um, <laughs> to give you, unfortunately. That's why Ron is on the show. You need to mix up your movies, by the way. It's a lot of superheroes. You, you, need, you, you might want to watch Blindside. You know, mix, it, mix in a, a, you know, a, a Western or something. I don't know. Um, I think the Govers are going to win. I think it's going to be close. I think it's going to be something like 20 to 17 or 17, 14. It's going to be back and forth. It's going to be fun. It's going to be tense. It's everything the Axe game should be. And hopefully for the first time since 93 and 94, the Gophers win it and back to Back here. Sandra Bullock will be on the phone with Kirk Sharaka today saying, run the dang ball, Bert. Hey, there you go, JG. <laughs> spoiler, another spoiler alert. Uh, Michael Orr gets drafted into the NFL, so sorry to ruin that for, for all of you at home. Uh, like Justin said, we want to thank all of you for watching the Gopher pregame show this season. It's been a lot of fun to be with these two professionals. I got to tell you, it's a lot of fun hanging with these guys, and we certainly look forward to seeing you guys next season on the Gopher pregame show. Enjoy the game, everybody.